function times the derivative of the low function all over squared. Or if you prefer, if you prefer, if you like the DDX format like I do, this says the same thing. Oh, there is. There is. And you know what? I think my, I liked it, so I'm, I'm going to steal it from Michael. So he, he, he introduced it. Actually, I've heard it before, but it, it's a good. It said, what's it say again? Low di minus high d low, square the bottom, and the way we go. That's right. <laughs> Very cool. Low d high minus high d low, square the bottom, and away we go. But you have to do this with it. <laughs> That's a Harry Potter version of this man. Yeah. Low D high D high minus high D low square the bottom and away you go. <laughs> yeah. Derivative of the bottom, I'm sorry, derivative of the top times the bottom or the bottom times the derivative of the top minus the top times the derivative of the bottom all over the bottom squared. That's really what you're doing. Low d high minus high d low, square of the bottom, away you go. Sound good? Yes. Is the first, uh, the first, uh, is the first one supposed to be the bottom? Or can it be the top first? Can you do that? Yeah. Hang on. Can you do that? You mean can you interchange these two? No, uh, the side, uh, from left of the minus sign, right of the minus sign. Can you interchange these two? Yeah. Absolutely not. Okay. Because subtraction is not commutative like addition is. Okay, if you interchange those, is 5 minus 7 the same as 7 minus 3? I'm sorry. <laughs> That's not even close to the same thing. Is 5 minus 7 the same thing as 7? No. So if I just interchange, I'd be like, wait a second. No, that's not even close. If I interchange these two things, no, they're still not the same. You can't take the top times the derivative of the bottom minus the bottom times the derivative of the top. That's what you're asking. You could interchange these. The derivative of the top times the bottom. Multiplication is commutative, that would be fine. Subtraction is not. So this is order dependent. Okay, you have to do it. That's not true with product rule, is it? That one, it doesn't really matter. Uh, but this one very much so matters. That's why I like the new mark. Uh, low d high minus high d low square the bottom. You got it? Shall we practice it? I think so. I thought you never were going to recite a DA. No. <laughs> Don't pass that. I'm not going to make you sing. It's not a requirement of this course. So you made this do in high school? I did. <laughs> this is no longer high school. You graduated singing. <laughs> now, let's look at an example. These are slightly different than the product rule because some of these examples can't be done without the quotient rule <coughs> at all. You'll see it. By the way, you're going to find that the taking of the derivatives really isn't all that hard. I mean, you know pretty much everything there is to know at this point about taking simple derivatives, right? You move the exponent to the front, you take one away from it. That's a derivative of basic functions. Now it's just using the rules to split these up into little pieces to make them easier. So if you know the rules and the derivative, hey, you're, you're good, you're fine, you're good to go. It's like you square at the bottom, away you go. Okay. Anyway. Now, this problem is, a, is slightly different than if I would have given you this. Look at the boards, notice the difference. If I give you that, there's something you can do with that. Separate. Yeah, that's separable. You can separate into three different fractions, simplify those exponents, then take the derivative of every single one. That actually might be the way to go for this problem. You with me? That'd probably be easier than using all this stuff, the quotient rule. Separate three fractions. I think some of your homework was like that, wasn't it? Mm -hmm. Separate it, simplify the fractions into, so combine exponents, and then take a derivative of each little piece, and that's fine. However, as soon as you do this, 
Can you do that anymore? Well, you can. You can separate three fractions, but it's not simplifiable like you did before. You can't say x cubed over 2x plus 5 is one, one term. You can't do that anymore. You can't separate this 2x plus the 5. You can't do that. You see what I'm talking about there? Now, there might be a way if you multiply it by the conjugate. No, no, still even that. It makes it worse. Uh, nothing good can come of this. <laughs> The only thing we can do is, is understand that, hey, that is in fact a quotient, right? Does it fall into the category of the quotient rule? Which means I have a function in terms of x over a function in terms of x. Do I? I wouldn't want to do it for this. That's not a function in terms of x. That would just be 2. That, in that case, separate them. Man, that's so much easier. Uh, don't use the quotient rule for stuff that you can, you can do other things with. Usually, the other things are easier. So, let's try to set up the quotient rule. Why don't you do it? Uh, if you know what, I'll do it with you the first one. I'll give you one in just a second to set it up because I want to show you how exactly I want it. For dy dx, that would be the derivative of y with respect to x. We're going to take low d high minus high d low all over the bottom squared and then away or whatever this is. Um, we're going to do that. But I do want to see your work. I'll give you a partial credit if I see that you know how to do the quotient rule, okay, which means I want to see every little step. You're learning this right now. And if I see wrong answers at the end, I want to see where your mistakes happen. So I want to see all this work. Understand? I want to see it. So we take the g of x. In that case, this is the, the bottom function, the 2x plus 5. The low, the d, the high. Low d high minus... The high, the, what's our high again? And then the D low, something like C low. You guys, what's the voice? Great <laughs> show, by the way. Yeah, some student earlier said, Do you have ADD? I'm like, I don't know. <laughs> Look at that butterfly. <laughs> over the low squared, the bottom squared. So we have, you don't need brackets here, you use parentheses if you want. Low d high minus high d low square the bottom and you're done. Doesn't quite have the same. <laughs> <laughs> how many people can follow that though, Rich? Right Notice how we've, we've changed this, this quotient into something, well, these are very easy derivatives, very easy. You just have to follow the rule to make sure you get it to easy derivatives. Everything is pretty much going to be like that. Memorize the derivatives, know how to do the derivatives, memorize the rules and put them together. That's it. Nothing too extraordinary. You know, just follow the rules that I give you and you'll be fine. I know I make it sound very easy right now. Okay, Some of the rules, yeah, you have to really know how they interplay. I'll show you that as we get going, but if you understand the rules really well, the class becomes kind of a piece of cake after that. Does the 2x plus 5 change? Does the x cubed minus 3x squared minus 5 change? Follow the dx, ddx, follow the derivative. Uh, everybody, what is the derivative of this, please? 3x squared minus 6x. So far, so good? I don't want to see this garbage from you guys anymore. You leave that, I'm marking off points from you. Why? You absolutely must have parentheses. You're going to be distributing that in just a second. Okay, so you must have parentheses there. You leave me just this, I'm going to go, no, you don't understand what you're doing. That's different than this. So show me the parentheses where they're applicable. Does this change? There's no ddx associated with that. So x cubed minus 3x squared minus 5, okay. Does this change? What is that? Now, I don't need parentheses around the two. Okay, that's just one, <laughs> one factor. That's all right. But the other things, yeah, you've got to have those. All over, well, we're going to have the 2x plus 5, and we're going to have a square. Rarely will you distribute this. Rarely will you distribute this. This one, yes. We'll distribute this, and we'll combine them. Rarely will you distribute that. And the reason is, if you can simplify it, you will. You'll try to simplify that thing. <coughs> and it's already factored for you very nicely. Okay, you don't want to get the... 
4x squared whatever. Not plus 25, but you get 4x squared plus 20x plus 25. That's what you get. Uh, you don't really need to do that. Just leave it the way it is. This works out for us very nicely, especially when you start graphing these, which hint, hint, you're going to graph those uh, without a calculator. It's so fun. Uh, like another puzzle. <laughs> Double-sided butterfly with psychedelic colors. It's that type of puzzle. But it's still kind of fun, so not a throw-in-the-fireplace type of puzzle. It's a fun puzzle. Uh, we'll, we'll talk about how to do that, and this form fits a little bit better for us. So we'll continue. Let's go ahead and distribute this. Can you tell me what you get when you distribute? Okay. I actually heard none of you. I'm just doing some ahead. Thanks a lot, guys. Appreciate it. That's okay. I know you know how to distribute. I'm going to do both these at the same time, the negative and the 2. So minus 2x cubed plus 6x squared plus 10. Do you see where the plus 6x squared and the plus 10 are coming from? Yeah. Okay, good. Maybe a little combine like terms here. If we combine some like terms, I'm seeing the x cubes. That gives me that 4x cubed. Awesome. Well, I got a whole bunch of x squareds going on, don't I? Mm -hmm. By the way, if I'm making a mistake, you let me know. I get see a 12, negative 12, positive 15, positive 6. That looks like it's going to be 9. That one. Minus 30x. <coughs> That's your derivative. What did we just find? What's this? What's that stand for? That's derivative. What's the derivative stand for? Slope of, slope of that curve at what point? Whatever I want. So if I asked you to find the slope at x equals 1, could you do it? Sure, you plug 1 into here to find the point, 1 comma something. True? Then you plug 1 into here to find the slope. You'd have a slope and a point. y minus y1 equals mx minus x1. You can find the slope of that, that tangent line to that curve at that point. So this is still a slope formula. Now what you would do in general, you'd try to factor this and simplified it if you, if you can. You can still do that. Sometimes that will help you. Now, when you have like an x cubed, don't really worry about that, that so much. Those are fairly difficult to factor in general. If you can, try it. See what you can do. Could you take a second derivative of that? You see, you'd have to have another quotient rule. However, I haven't showed you how to deal with that exponent yet. So when you did low d high minus high d low, that d low would be the derivative of 2x plus 5 squared, right? So you'd have to distribute that at this point, or use a product rule within that at this point. Yes, you can use rules within rules. We're going to have a lot of that in this class. For instance, if, you, if I do a problem like this one, I'm not going to do this for you, I just want to give you a heads up. If I ask you to find the derivative of that, do you see how firstly there is a product 